Morgan, I can't watch this video. It's not available in America. Big W for America. Just goes hard for no reason, you know? Keeping that Vivian Westwood logo on your neck to keep you classy while you're out there licking boots. I personally think playing Stop Breathing at Awake is perfect. Anyways, I'm gonna take you from here to here. Guaranteed. Easily. Okay, I gotta pee. Without a doubt in my mind. Anyways, so there are no rules, and I'm gonna give you a reason to be happy about it. I'll be this back is in a why second. your accessories suck. Okay, remember how I said there are no rules. There are rules. Ah, <laughs> uh, they're more like suggestions. They're like half-assed rules. Like how you're not supposed to like pour the milk before the cereal or how you're not supposed to eat the Kit Kat this way or you will get publicly stoned on the internet or how you're not supposed to sleep with your friend's mom. These are all suggestions, but none of them are illegal. Like mixing your metals right here. Mixing your metals isn't, it's not illegal. But there's a reason you pour the cereal first so that you know how much milk you gotta have in the bowl. Don't argue with this here. It's just not, that's not what this video is about to become. But you might have the urge to be flashy so that your accessories are more visible to people and then they can notice your hard work and uh, credit your decision making. But no, you don't wanna do that. You're really gonna be drawing attention to a mess if you're peacocking like that, especially with stuff like this. But we'll get back to that. We'll get back to this. I have a lot to say about this. Who taught you guys? A comparison I like to make about just kind of making a lot of noise and being annoying about details is cologne and perfume. When you try so hard to tell people like, oh, look at me, I bought a bottle of Dior Sauvage, bro. And you're spraying yourself like you're about to clean a mirror. We hate you, dog. I don't even, I can't even smell anything anymore. I'm just mouth breathing around you and I can taste it. You know, you spray cologne on yourself and it's like, it tastes like a cursed LaCroix, bro. I feel that mixing different hardwares can clash and make your outfit feel very cluttered and anxious. Honestly, I feel most of your problems start here. Again, I've seen this done right, but if you're not styling your fit specifically to fit with this type of dissonance, then you're really just making your life harder for yourself. Bro, stop throwing on these random copper rings, bro. Like, why do you guys do this? Why do you guys like this? I know this is not how this works, but why are you aiming for third place? It's like, mmm, gold, that's a good one. Mmm, silver, that's a very reliable one. Ooh, copper, exciting. I will never understand why motherfuckers wear copper shit. I, I don't get it. What? Why are you picking brown? And you over there is always the guy with the random black ring. The random Don't get that either. Onyx ring. Don't get bro. the ro Or even these Don't ones, get the bronze. Bro. These ones with like the random silver trimming. I was guilty of this too. I'm kind of talking to myself a little bit. This aesthetic right here, this is all I can think about with you guys, bro. You're the fashion equivalent of a mall kiosk. God gave you 10 chances and you up with all of them. Now, I've definitely seen some cool pieces in this type of finish, right? But again, your random $1 eBay finds or your crazy Amazon gems are not doing the same thing. Also, ropes. What is this? Let me see them hands now. I mean, dude, what do you mean? Look at this shit. My jewelry is on fucking point, okay? Got the pearl necklace. You got the pearls for the girls. You got this like uh, little Japanese fashion. Okay. Also has pearls on it. Then here it is. Okay. All silver, baby. None of that. None of that crazy shit. None of that. None of that craziness. You got the Teddy Fresh. This one was silver and gold, which I only wear because my mom gave it to me, even though I'm not a big fan of silver and gold together but you can't really tell anyway. And uh, here are the rings and the fingers and the fingies. <sighs> Those rings look like what the kids at the magic tournaments wear. Wait, what? It's all thrifted, brokey, flexing for the goth and crystal mommies out here. Knew it. Gay Freemason. <laughs> True. Are you preparing in case you get lost in the wild? You got the aesthetic of a conservative Disney adult's home on your wrist, buddy. Okay, I just want to rant a bit because I think it's kind of funny. But all because there are no rules. Again, you guys. Oh, the pinky ring is just Vivian Westwood. And that's what it says. It's a Vivian Westwood ring. 
can do whatever you want, but you are going to be that guy. That's you. That's you. Okay, starting with medals, I feel like sticking to one type of finish is probably your best bet. And I'm talking silver or gold. Those ones are probably going to be your most reliable and universal. Now, different color stones or pearls or charms or paints can work well alongside the hardware just fine. Now, what I've noticed is people with dark skin look amazing in gold. Just the color really contrasts and pops with the tone of their skin. But again, there are no rules. There are only suggestions. Sometimes I be in a Kit Kat like this. I don't care, bro. At least I'm not wearing no copper rings. Now, piece selection, right? Picking when and where to... to to accessorize, bro. That is the lifelong struggle, bro. That you will always have a moment. Do I want to wear a beanie with this fit? Do the do my chains complement my top? Is the bag necessary? There's so many questions. Wouldn't it be sick if I was just kind of if I was just like on an app on your phone and then you just turn on the camera when you have an outfit on and, it, and you put it in the mirror and I can see your whole outfit and I pop up on your screen like this and then I can just give you advice like an Alexa. Alexa, subscribe to Frugal Aesthetic on YouTube. You're welcome. I'm not even give you warning. <laughs> wow, that's a sick beanie. I like it. Too bad it doesn't cover your face. <sighs> wow, that's a bold yet rewarding choice on the jacket. I really like it. It takes away the attention. Do you fuck from with your throwing fix. fits at all? What do you mean? Yeah, is that the homie? <sighs> this is the reason she doesn't want you. And then I would make you pay for the positive version on the app store. I like to think of accessorizing like seasoning, bro. Sometimes you just throwing stuff on there and it tastes good and you don't know why. Literally that. At the end of the day, accessorizing is trial and error. Don't be afraid to throw some wild card accessory on a fit that you weren't planning on doing it with. Over time, you build this intuition that can capitalize on the lack of rules. Just like turn your brain off for a little bit. Wow, that was fast. And then just throw random pieces on, like like headwear that you weren't expecting to go with that outfit or like a random bag. Or like maybe just throw on a chain. It could be really subtle. Just go see what happens. Sometimes it can create a little magic that you wouldn't have been able uh. to plan around. Like this fit with Sanji. He's wearing Ark, Terex, and Rick, which is already... How do you even get there? But this piece, this Sundays.xyz beanie, creates a little moment on this fit where you wouldn't really expect to throw on a lilac checkered beanie. This is what I mean by the magic. You see, like, was this planned? I don't know. Was it intuition? I don't know. Was it random? I don't know. We'll never know. He might not even know. And neither will you if you don't try things out for yourself. Now, how do you properly do this? What is the method behind the madness right now? Honestly, if you have a lot of good jewelry that just matches, you can kind of just go crazy without thinking. You know, it's not that hard to look like you meticulously planned every- Everybody thinks I dress like this when I just wear like two pieces of jewelry on one hand and two pieces on the other hand. Yeah, sure, back in the day, I used to wear- <gasps> I used to go heavy on this jewelry. But. Single ring and every single inch of metal on your body, every fit, when you kind of did, sourcing it. You took the time to find good pieces that work with each other. This is what separates the messy from the messy. Chances are a stack of chrome hearts metal or a bunch of curated vintage jewelry is gonna look so great together, as opposed to that random stack of metal detector loot you got trying to be as cheap as possible. Just looking like you took a couple hours out of your day and walked around the beach with one of these bad boys and then decided that that was your contribution to climate change. Beach cleanup loot aesthetic. Honestly, that's the- Oh, 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 I thought you were talking about frugal. I fuck with frugal. Frugal's the, key, uh, frugal's the boy. Uh, but as far as throwing fits goes, yeah, I, I did a podcast with them. It's going to be coming out next week, probably. Term. Whoa, bro, I really love your beach loot. So having the right pieces paramount honestly having a couple bangers that you're gonna wear every day with everything is so much better than having a bunch of junk and this principle is kind of like that all across the board for fashion but i feel like it's even more emphasized when it comes to stuff like jewelry and this doesn't mean expensive like you could find random gems at flea markets or vintage shops or some like really cool unique stuff on etsy like my most expensive and favorite pieces are my alex skeffington rings that i've built over the course of four years i literally got one ring a year and decided that i was going to complete the set eventually knowing that the ensemble was going to look amazing and now they are still my daily drivers to this day but 
But my most unique and asked about ring is this studio cult ring that costed about a fourth as much as just one of these. And now I wear this one almost every day as well. So take your sweet ass time. Your fingers are not going anywhere. Knock on wood, that would suck. Now, where do you start though? Where do you start? You want the shortcuts, huh? You want to cut the line. I grinded my ass off for this view. Now you just want to take an elevator to the top. That's crazy. Everyone wants their hand held. Ooh, Christian, where do I find good jewelry that's not expensive, but it's also good quality, but it's also very stylish, but it's also pretty, but it's also... Take me out to dinner first. What is this? Anyways, this is probably why you're here. This is probably your most, this, pro this is the most asked question when it comes to jewelry, when people ask me about stuff. So I might as well delete. Call frugal and shows expensive piece. Man, fashion is an expensive endeavor, man. Drip or drown, you know what I mean? One of the greatest shortcuts in fashion, though, is just having a lot of money, straight up. That's it. It's infinitely harder to make shit work when you don't have the money, okay? Straight up. Um, but you can still do it. Every single thing that I have on, I think my jewelry is fine, okay? My jewelry is excellent. But every single thing I have on is worth like maximum $100. It's silver and literally just $100 max. Now, you might say that's a lot of money, to which I say I agree. I do think it's a lot of money. I wore a lot of fucking shit that made my fingers green for a very long time. Have you considered not wearing jewelry? Because why, why, why? I mean, if you don't want to wear jewelry, then, uh, I, then you know, I'm not forcing you to. But also, Frugal mentioned in the fucking video that his most, like, eye-catching uh, ring that everybody asked him about is a ring that costs less than the other ones that he put together over the course of multiple years. <sighs> Literally wearing money on his fingers is why it turned... Green? Um, no. Because it's super cheap shit. You don't have to wear jewelry, but if you want to, there are things you can do. Deliver. I'm going to speed run a couple of my favorites, going from least expensive to high budget, and then you can make a decision for yourself. Starting off with Vintage and Thrifted, which is not a brand, which a lot of people hate, apparently, when I give them answers that aren't a brand. But this technique will be handy no matter where your budget is. Find a flea market or a vintage store near you and just kind of check out the selection. You never know what you're going to find, and also you have a chance to bargain down the price most of the time. If you put in the effort, you will find gems. You have to put in the effort, though. And if you're lazy, you can't really expect too much. Now, the next one, finally a brand. God, hard jewelry. F***ing fan favorite, bro. I'm so impressed with how ride or die that fan base is. It's nuts. It's kind of scary. Tons and tons of cool designs going from, from rings to pendants to chains, kind of anything you want when it comes to metal. And the barrier for entry is about as low as you can get when it comes to buying something of quality. Just frequently has massive sales and just new stuff being released all the time. And also has the option to upgrade to a sterling silver piece from a stainless steel in case you want to ball out, which is kind of a cool idea and an option that I feel should be implemented more. Just definitely recommend. It's a good starting point for people trying to get into jewelry and you should go check it out. Hatton Labs, another one of my favorite brands, just has some amazing minimal staple pieces. Love the colored stone stuff. I wear this micro Cuban everywhere. Also, this pearl uh, charm uh, bracelet, also from them. I love this combo specifically. Great for having daily drivers. You can also use code FRUGAL at checkout if you want a 15% off assist. This video is not sponsored. They have never paid me to say any of this. I'm just friends with the guy that runs this thing. Those are my boys. Next is Studio Cult. This one's a little bit more eccentric and out there. But What is this fuckboy shit, lol? Bro, we're watching a video about fashion. Like, what? What led you to think that this was going to be about, like, fucking upholding the immortal science of Marxist-Leninism, bro? We're watching a fucking fashion video, dude. Can we please sometimes do things that are not immediately fucking advancing the proletarian struggle uh, globally? Is that something that is allowed here? Holy fuck, dude. Every chatter is just literally like, bro, what the fuck is a fuck bullshit? Yeah, it's fashion, dummy. 
Of course it's fuckboy shit. But I love seeing what they come up with. You dripless, no pussy having motherfucker, dude. This is why, okay? Because you're dripless and you're afraid of experimenting. You're afraid of fucking moving outside of your comfort zone a little bit. And then you come into the fucking Chad Vice segment and you go, oh my God, Hassan, why does everybody always swipe uh, whichever direction is the one that declines on Tinder on me. What is it? Swipe left. Why does everybody swipe left on me? Because you're swagless, dude. Okay. You're swagged out like Ohio. Okay. You got no swag. You got no riz. And now you got no bitches. And you're fucking complaining, dude. Holy shit. Literally, so many of the chatters who are not chiming in right now who I know for a motherfucking fact one time decided to paint their fingernails or one time decided to fucking, you know, ball out and get like a fake pearl necklace and they wore it and immediately they it, it, they improved their chances of talking to people by like 45% because they're like, oh my God, you're the only guy in Arkansas that wears pearl necklaces. I'm immediately going to assume you're not some fucking weirdo. Okay. It's sometimes good to just express yourself in a way that, like, is unique. You know what I mean? Not in New York City. Yeah, of course not in New York City. Shut up. Not everybody lives in New York City, you bi-coastal elitist. Huh. <sighs> anyway. You're also talking to someone who literally was so afraid of wearing sunglasses or a hat. I had so much social anxiety back in the day. I couldn't even wear fucking sunglasses or a hat. Okay, because I thought everyone's going to look at my hat and sunglasses and go, why is that motherfucker wearing sunglasses and a hat? Not realizing it's a totally normal thing to wear. <coughs> but straight up, I couldn't even fucking wear sunglasses, dude. Look at me now. with it's nuts it's a bunch of eye catchers for sure and it's perfect for those of you that are trying to experiment with some shapes again this ring this this stupid ring that everyone asks about is from them harry hunt and co for my gentleman i've actually seen harry make this exact ring oh my god i'm going to i hate everything there we go I've seen him make this ring. Here's the video playing right now. And it's kind of nuts to think about that someone took their time out of their day to make something and I'm just wearing it on my finger. The Great Frog, also sick. Tons of beautiful designs and kind of perfect for someone that's just looking for a quality piece of metal that they're going to wear for a very long time. And lastly, my girl, Alex Skeffington. How can I forget? Just insane work. Love her. She's great. I don't think I'll ever get tired of this set. This is probably going to be my left hand for a very long time. Those are my recs. Feel free to check them out. Everything uh, will be in the description probably if I'm not lazy. If I am lazy, just Google it. I talked about it uh, and let them know I sent you and show me pictures of what you end up buying. It might be. Is your shirt of the band Lorna Shore? No, my shirt is from the band William Neff. I need glasses and was super anxious about how I would look, so I did. I never did anything about it. Couldn't really see law. Once I found a dope pair, I've been getting compliments, and it makes me feel so good. Yeah, I mean, look. You talk to Jimmy of throwing fits about also being a 9-11 Andy? Answer to that, James, or at least a comment. Wait, really? Well, I don't think we're getting a taste of our own medicine, but we're definitely doing something to make some people really mad. Oh, my God. This dude was an OG 9-11 Andy? No wonder he wanted to fucking have me and, on the pod. Um, one of the steps we had to take so we don't get in a war or anything is to figure out what that <coughs> is. Respect. Who's this guy? Want to do some more research? This is uh, Dr. Taco MD on Twitter. Uh, he's uh, one of the hosts of uh, Throwing Fits, which is the uh, podcast that I went on. It was a fashion podcast. My man was in the trenches. Anyway, got a pair of Cartier frames at a local pawn shop my girl found. That's fire. Good for you. Um, anyway, what was I saying? What was I going to say?